So the emerging trends in the field are that patients are being increasingly diagnosed. This used to be a condition that was frequently missed and I think it's less frequently missed now, although it continues to be missed. And there's very clear evidence from our group and others that patients are being diagnosed earlier and earlier in the course of their disease. So I think the one of the important trends and what we will see over the next five to 10 years is that there are more and more patients and they're diagnosed earlier and earlier in the course of their disease, if you like. Um, in terms of treatment, I think the you know, the emerging trends will be the effect of you know, better drugs, if you like, so potentially acroamidis over tofaminis, potentially uh, gene, better gene silencers that knock down the TTR protein more effectively, and then, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the possibility of drugs to accelerate removal of existing amyloid to improve the outcome of patients. I think um, it means it means bringing up the younger generation, you know, and, uh, and and helping the younger generation to you know learn about trials, conduct trials, and uh, and also sharing results across countries. And you know, global global studies like this mean that there's a lot of crosstalk between countries. Principal investigators talk to one another. So you know, the, it, trial leadership I think fosters collaboration. The education needs firstly are around diagnosis. Diagnosis is a very big issue in ATTR and my cardiomyopathy. I mentioned that it, uh, it, it, it frequently gets missed, the diagnosis, and it's, there's frequently a delay in diagnosis. So the, the educational needs I think are around you know, increasing awareness of this condition, which is, was thought to be rare, but is now not known to be so rare, and improving diagnostic techniques. And there are some subtleties around uh, what we call non-invasive diagnosis. The condition can be diagnosed without a biopsy nowadays, but you know, that can only be done in about 70% of patients. And clinicians need to understand when they do and when they don't need to do a, a biopsy. So I think you know, a lot of the educational needs are around diagnosis more than anything.